Okay, so let's look in terms of the end of the week. Uh, this is what's currently happening as pretty much expected that this is going to happen because there's no uh, lower high yet. However, a new lower low formed, especially with all these, but the last low was this guy. So overall, it's still based in an uptrend. So now that there's two longer weeks, I have no doubt that if a lower high will form, a peak will form, then either a new higher low or a new higher low somewhere here, a new lower low will occur. And if you can see here, one, two, three days, but in actual fact, it created a hammer, touched the trend line once again, and then rebounded all the way to the upside. So uh, I don't know whether if my target point got hit because the low of this one was 43.76. Let me go here. Four hours, one hour, one, that's nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, twelve. Yeah, twelve o'clock, forty three, seventy six, twenty. Um at a midnight. Then yeah, creating new higher highs from that higher low. And here you can see very clearly now lower high. But you have a very bullish candle, you have all these as well. Um, target point is around 4460, which is here within the supply. And if it goes through there, bam, and easing. So we said 43, 4460, somewhere there, or even here, because it's also really solid here, 4442. But one, two, three, once we'll see some form of a, a doji lack of volume, where there's divergence over bot conditions, then um, I'm gonna go hard once again with this one. So um, I will, uh, um, I know I shared right there, uh, but I'll go a little bit more in specifics uh, because I just shared just an overview point in terms of a strategy. Um, that, yeah, once you have the plan, it's so good. It was, uh, it went perfectly as planned. So you're see. looking for, you're looking for a, a higher low on the daily. And then you're once that happens, you're you're gonna push it for the way down, right? That's what you're. Yes, a, a lower for. high. Once you see that. Lower, lower high. high. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. It's okay. Once you get the doji happening, and like say here somewhere here, you know, see how there's increasing volume, right? Mm -hmm. um, once they're gonna push it somewhere here, and you can see depletion of volume. And then once a doji happens, um, I'm gonna go hard on this one. So uh, I'm gonna take that opportunity because uh, in my opinion, this one, two, three, <laughs> uh, since a new lower low has been formed, a minor lower high has to form. And, and it also tested this trend line right there. So, which is good. Um, and hence, once that happens, lower high, lower low to read this low back to 42.34. And if it does that, you know, depending on what it'll do, bigger time frame, in my opinion, this 32, all the way 36, 50 percentile, um, I'm still very optimistic that this is the correctional part. Somewhere down there. Done. So in other words, uh, on the monthly, that thing finishes a nice hammer or something, you're going to be a happy camper. You're, you're going to be very confident on it. Uh, if, actually, I would prefer if by the end of the month finishes like around the 4,400, somewhere there, somewhere here. Yeah. So which means that next week, um, if I'm bearish next week, um, the end of basically what August yeah, 26th, yeah, 26th, and then you have two more days. So just imagine like one, two, it might, it might creep up. You have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then you have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I mean, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Then you'll see the monthly. You'll see the monthly more of a doji. The month if the doji will happen, 
dude, this is gonna be sweet. So, cause notice, look at that. <laughs> yeah, there's not much volume. Like, uh, this is way definitely overbought, and in, in terms of oscillation, and September, October, ooh, one month it'll go. Any event, like, um, like say what happened at the beginning of the week, right? You have um, the Taliban taking over Afghanistan. So anything like that, anything that's war-based, uncertainty hits, phew, this is going to tank. Um, yeah, I got, a, I got a feeling that somebody's going to have to pay for that over there. And yeah, I was thinking that myself, it could really hurt our economy. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, cool. Cool. I'm still bearish with it. Uh, VIX, I'm also bullish with it. Uh, this just has to happen. They, they need to correct before higher low. Dollar index. Um, very nice. I, I'm a short-term correct, correction. And um, likewise for oil. Now that is approach major demand here. Uh, now I'm a... I'm a buyer with, with oil. It looks really nice at this point in time. So it's a really good opportunity. Back to your uh, demand area. I have no doubt some form of doji or even um, a piercing pattern would form through there. It's a form of reversal. Um, this is way being battered, 69, 62, $6. I mean, that's peeling still. Uh, but it's okay. <laughs> Yeah. Um, UK oil, same currently now at demand. So, we didn't hear that you have some confluence, so we're in an area of demand at this point as well. So, looking really neat. Gold, they're just hovering between two points, they don't know where to go. But looking at the weekly time frame. Kind of doji. I'm still bearish with it, medium term, in my opinion. They need to fill in this gap. Um, likewise for sorry, oil. Look at that. It's very bearish. That's why, even though it's really good to buy back in, but also going to be aware that it's also very bearish at this point in time. Maybe they're going to push it down to even 58. This uh, 58 signal, 58 level. Um. UK oil same. Yeah, very, it's very powerful compared to all this, right? So I, when the market is the same, when there's a lot of doji, this is going to be violent at one point. This is going to be nice. So, but I it's, want to be part of that. <laughs> Masari, see Masari, I like, love it for like SPX 500. It's, uh, that I like, really like Masari for SPX 500. So. Yeah. All right, let's look at the, the majors. So actually, uh, let's go through, I know we did gold, um, copper. I'm also very bearish, uh, sitting within the demand area on the other hand, but in my opinion, I believe this is gonna tank all the way down to 325. If uh, calculation is correct, somewhere there, around the 350, 325 there, but mainly within this demand. Uh, that's for the weekly daily time frame it's just rebounding uh, better to get a sell position around that 125 area 129 tyx same um looks very bearish still at this point in time that's why the vix is currently who uh, dollar index is currently lagging so uh, i know that it did break out which is awesome talking about the dollar index on the weekly looking really really nice i'm still forecasting that 97 since this one broke so next one 9460 this one breaks easy down to around that 97 air so medium long term i'm bullish with the dollar index definitely no doubt uh, and you can see it that very clearly there too on the monthly time frame uh shorter term though finishes like this and then um, I'm bullish with short term with the, uh, the euro against the, uh, the dollar. With the time frame, can't ignore it. <laughs> it's very bearish. Um, so I have no doubt there's some form of uh, stability 
correction continuation. And if neckline gets broken, it's going to go back to 110 somewhere sometime in the long run. So long term, I am bearish. You can see it. Uh, all the way down back down here once this one breaks. And even more scarier is that it will create a new lower low somewhere sometime in the future, back to 105. So yeah, when that happens, um, increase in interest rates, at one point the economy will uh, head back down. So, and everybody will go into the dog. Uh, Aussie. The Euro's got big news Monday morning early. So. <laughs> uh, Aussie is back to demand, 70, around 70 cents. Somewhere there, very bearish. However, also looking nice from a point of stability. But just because stability happens, though, there is still some room in order to get to 70, 13. It's about 130, 120 pips to the downside uh, on the daily. So, um, Gotta stay away from that for now since uh, medium term is bearish. Same thing with this. Uh, I need a proper higher low through there on a smaller term time frame. Four hours just basically started, goes from one, two, three, four, and then long. A lower low, we need a higher low before it can come back up around somewhere there. So that's with uh, Euro, pound. Same thing, what's happening? Stabilizing at the level of demand, which is great. Weekly time frame, on the other hand, very <laughs> powerful. Uh, no doubt it will break through 135. This same thing, this one breaks out back to around that 132 air. Um, that of 400 and something to the downside. Daily time frame, stability. So good potential reversal. I know this is very volatile. It's easy to make 100 pips to the upside. And then once lower high can hits, we're going to be shorting this guy. So one looks, this one looks good for short term, long, medium term bearish. Uh, Kiwi, same, stabilizing itself, liking it. Weekly time frame, very bearish though, but already approaching level of demand. So some form maybe doji, then one, two, three, four, back to around 70, then boom, this is gonna fail. So yeah, a lot of great opportunities with the, for the majors against the dollar. Dollar CAD, man, it went to all the way to 129.50. This was really nice. You traded this, didn't you? Yep. This was one of those that I, I purely went with intuition. It kept like it's got to be close and mm -hmm. that it paid off big time so i listen yeah. so that's good so weekly very bullish still continuation going to push it at 130 128 got broken and now back to 130 which is basically the free ride from there all the way to 133 37 and um daily time frame on the other hand very nice as a gravestone doji but if the price will come back up I need a lower high. Four hours already showing an evening star right there. Really nice. Um, a lot of um, momentum. So it's holding within the moving averages. Daily, there's a big gap right there. So 300 pips, two to 300 pips to the downside. One hour is already um, showing some signs of weakness. However, better if you create the proper lower high somewhere. So then um, shorting would be a good one for this. All right, so that's with uh, the dollar CAD. Let's look at the dollar Swiss. Um, I got out, I didn't want to play. It's just one, two, three. This is uh, the dollar against the Swiss is weak. I don't know what's pushing the, the Swiss, to be honest, to, to the upside. Um, I mean, to the downside. I mean, yeah, to the upside, unless it's... Uh, Gold, because gold is also part of that in terms of the Swiss. Uh, but we have a lower high here, so I'm bearish with it. I'm bearish with it as well. So it may come back down here before it can continue all the way to the upside. Monthly time frame, on the other hand, is still within constraints of uh, potential reversal. So. Uh, longer term, I am bullish. Shorter term, 
medium term, short, medium term, I'm, I'm bearish. So yeah, gotta be aware with that. Um, yeah, lower high. One more. It's kind of following gold right now. Swiss is kind of following gold. Exactly. And then dollar yen uh, is now officially below the eight of the 10. So from a lower high, I'm bearish on the dollar against the Japanese yen. Um, the time frame, looking at that, another lower high. So a more of a short position or short rather than going long. All right, any questions with the major against the uh, US dollar there, Perry? No, I, 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 yeah, I asked him on the SPI 500, so that's all I can think of. Cool, let's look at the majors against the yen here quickly. Aussie yen still bearish, uh, daily time frame stability, so potential long from a form of correction. Euro yen, same potential correction, weekly time frame depleting in volume. So there's a, a good opportunity here too. Overall, still based in an uptrend, whether you like it or not. So uh, pound yen, very bearish uh, with this. So stability somewhere here, 148. Oh, nice doji. So it's a low risk, high probability, in my opinion. 149, 148, like 100 pips. 100 pips stop loss to make um, 200 pips. So there's approximately two, two to one worth the risk ratio there. So it looks it's looking good. Swiss yen, um, weekly stabilizing itself, potential uh, long. And daily time frame potential long tomorrow and high low easy. CAD yen stabilize itself, looking really neat. Uh, however, it's also very bearish. Despite with that one, back to the 87, 8650, 87, about 100, 150 pips. And there's some great opportunities, definitely, definitely. Kiwi, same. Stability back to 76. So about 100 pips, 120 pips to the upside. Weekly time frame also very bearish on the other hand. So you can't ignore that weeklies are very uh, bearish. However, um, short term potential correction, low risk, high probability. So that's it for the week uh, market update there. Uh, Perry, do you have any questions? So uh, which one's your favorite? Like, uh, right now, my favorite is the euro dollar. Um, there is a potential right there uh, because of the dollar index. Uh, any majors pound against the US dollar, low risk, high probability because this one's also volatile. I like this one. Kiwi, I like it as well. Dollar CAD, I like it as well. Um, however, I need to wait for that lower high to hit. Dollar on, on that one, you're looking for a lower high. You're talking like go to four hours or whatever to see it. Like <clears throat> kind of come back up on the four hour and then where you're looking to short it. Yes, correct. Okay. Because that's, that's 100 pips to the downside right there. Top to bottom mm -hmm. is 100 pips because this one's been volatile. So you know, around 50 to 70, 80 pips. And then bam, going to short this guy. Okay. Dollar Swiss. Please. So you kind of see a stair step. You're thinking of uh, seeing a stair step up on the four hour and then Correct. nail it. Cool. Exactly. Cool. That's yeah. what we want. Yep. Um, dollar Swiss, same. I'm bearish with it. Dollar yen, I am actually bearish with the dollar yen. Um, uh, you want to want to see this because uh, that lower high probability will head back down here, back to 109.18. Um, easy go all the way back down there. Lower high, lower low. So if it, so, finish a, if it would finish an evening star on the four hour, that would be one of those to maybe trade tonight at closing, huh? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and then all the majors against the end also have a really good opportunities. So it's just mm -hmm. a matter of uh, timing. Yeah, I like the pounds because it's the lowest risk with the highest rewards. <laughs> yeah. That's the ones I like. Exactly. So. Uh, the pound, yeah, this is also really good. Um, low risk is a there's a two to one reward to risk ratio right there. 